generations, the country's elite has been formed by a uniquely British institution, the private boarding school. Here, children as young as eight are sent away by their parents to get the best education money can buy. We followed four of the youngest boarders through the highs and lows of their first term, away from home. How did they and their families cope with the separation? Today will be April Ross's first day at boarding school. This is my best sleeping bag. And these are my best knickers. I like it in knickers. There is a real horse inside this. Is there? Yeah. Where? Uh, uh, there's wood covering it up, but there's a real horse inside it. <laughs> well, I think there is. The Rosses are an army family who have frequently moved around the country. They've already sent their 11-year-old son, Alex, to boarding school to give him some stability. Now, Mum Sandra is dreading the thought of also sending her daughter. It's difficult. It's going to really, really crucify me. But I feel that it's a sacrifice I'm making and I'm hoping that it, in the future it will prove to be a, for April's benefit. We'll just go upstairs, please, and just check. There's nothing in your room that you want to take. Oh, Mummy. I need my reading glasses. A little hug. Whenever you are feeling sad and things aren't going right and your usual happy smile has slipped right out of sight. Oh, I'm all right. No, Mummy's silly, isn't she? Here's a little hug from me if I cannot be there because I want you to know just how much I care. Okay? I'm crying. No, I'm not. Do you know why I'm crying? Because I'm happy. Gosh, get tearful thinking of it. I miss having breakfast every morning. Um, I miss having to watch children TV. Hannah Montana on the TV all the time. I'm going to miss just chasing around after her. I'm going to miss, certainly going to miss kissing her goodnight. Um... Gosh, everything. I just, I just don't really want to think about it, actually. I can't really. I, I've sort of put that in a little box at the moment, and I'll just deal with that when it happens. But I, I'm going to really miss her. She's my, she's my little soulmate. She really is. will be going to Highfield in Hampshire, one of the country's top prep schools. Billy Bramble in the car. <laughs> From today, she'll be living in a dorm with three other eight-year-old girls. They're all new to boarding, and this year they happen to all come from army families. Twins, Caitlin and Simone, are the first in their family to go to boarding school. Like the Rosses, their parents are sending them to Highfield in the hope that staying in one place will do them good. We went to Germany when they were six months old, came back when they were seven. And with my job at the moment, with another possible two, three moves until I finish in the forces, first one had been a year today of me moving. We thought, no, let's, let's really look into the boarding side of life. April's other new dorm mate is Lottie. Her dad went to boarding school from a young age. He's keen that his daughter should do the same, although her mum, Sarah, is still reluctant. Never. Never. I swore from the day she was born that no child of mine would go to boarding school. But, um... Jeremy boarded, but from 13, so he was very keen, loved it, and um, ever since we'd had children, but he quite wanted them all to board, and I just said no, and now he's one. <laughs> oh, 
Responsibility of Mr. Hesselman, the housemaster in charge of juniors at Highfield. Hey, girls, we don't seem to be getting on. I've already put the boys' lights out. <laughs> He's been looking after new boarders for the past ten years. Going to bed now. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mostly, the first few days, it's all so exciting and busy that that you, that sort of gets you through. Then later in the term, yeah, when, when things have seemed to have gone on smoothly, the homesickness can come up all of a sudden. Um, it's always there in the back of your minds that, you know, that that's going to be an issue for somebody at some point. Whilst the girls get used to their new surroundings, at home, the absence of the children is beginning to sink in. I didn't realise I'd be quite so anxious now about... I'm really anxious about not missing. had her for eight years and I don't want to let go yet <laughs> and most mummies find it hard when their children are 18 obviously I want to hear if she's not happy but you know it would break my heart if, if such a double-edged sword because I'm dying to hear if she's not happy I want to know I don't want them not to tell me but I think she probably is happy it's so weird to carry on talking when you're feeling emotional at this point and usually run off and find a tissue. <laughs> um, uh, but even with her being happy, it's weird her not being part of my life now, really. She's too young. Eight-year-old April Ross's first morning at boarding school. How was your first night, girls? Good. Good. I kept from rolling around in my bed. I cried the first night. So she came and woke me up. April sharing a dorm with twins Caitlin and Simone and Lottie. Are exactly okay, you have four. So we all ready to rock. Family, we all watch for each other now. At breakfast, the girls meet the hundred older children who also board at high school. For Simone, who cried in the night. It's all too much, and the staff step in to help her. 
you know, there is no magic cure for homesickness. There, there, there's, there's no wand that we can wave to make it go away. There's no, there's no medicine we can give them for homesickness. It really is a matter of they just have to learn to cope with it. They have to learn to develop coping mechanisms and strategies, obviously with our help and our guidance. If we could pop them a pill every night, we would to take away their homesickness, but that doesn't exist. To help the boarders get through the separation, the school tries to keep them as busy as possible. A full day of lessons is followed by extra one-to-one -one tuition. And evening activities aimed at bringing out the pupils' maximum potential. Yeah, if anyone's going to feel homesick, it's often at the times when things are quiet. Um, and in fact, they have to do an after-school activity every day of the week, all through um, the, 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 the year um, in the junior house, around with other people, so you don't have a chance to disappear off on your own too much. By tea time, Simone is feeling better. You've had a fun day today, and we're going to, if you would like, we're going to go and have a quick swim. Free swim. Go to the change room, get ready for swimming, we have a little bit of a free swim. But at the end of a busy day, Simone's homesickness returns. The school nurse, Mrs. Dunn, is on hand to comfort the children. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah. Where's your bed? Which is your bed? Hello. Is this you? This morning, um, she came up um, after breakfast because she really didn't eat very much at breakfast. She'd been utterly miserable for <laughs> breakfast since she arrived. But she came up and we just had a little chat about how it's really, really normal to feel like that. It would be extraordinary if you didn't miss, you know, um, being, being away from home. We had a chat about that and how it will get easier and, you know, the, the tricks are to keep yourself really busy and get yourself really tired. Um, and in fact, um, April buddied up with Simone today and I think that helped too. Dun, 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 to be continued. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. In order to settle the borders as quickly as possible, for the first week, the school urges parents not to call their children. It's very difficult because often a child that is homesick will naturally play up to their parent on the telephone um, because that, the contact, hearing the voice, that, that contact always makes children far more emotional. So um, we, we do try to advise the parents that, um, you know, actually they, they really do just have to sit back and trust us. And, and the difficulty is handing over the responsibility of their children to somebody else. You, you have to try and persuade the parent that actually um, they might know their child better than I do, but um, I know the environment and the situation that they're in better than they do. Letters from home are a high point for the children. Nossy Bagshaw, here we go. school we guess that when you read this you, you will have been at school for a day or so the school regularly updates the families on the border's progress after hearing of simone's homesickness her parents are finding it hard to hold off from calling her they're asking them like when, when do you think's the best time for us to ring or 
yeah, to ring them and things. And uh, it was that. Give them a few days. We, <clears throat> we usually say several days or so. I thought, oh, okay then. So then we sat around each night wondering what what they're no, doing. We've never not spoken to them and I wondered if it's been explained to them like why we're not ringing and even now we haven't got them the phone cards ready yet and I think do they know that we're just they're on the way and then they can but I'm just worried that things weren't explained to them. <laughs> Okay, we've had another very, very busy afternoon in sport this afternoon. A mere 20 fixtures going on. The hockey and football and netball. Very, very best of luck to all our teams. We've had some great results so far this season. Parents can visit their children once a week after sports matches on Wednesday afternoons. Seven days since Lottie left home, her mother Sarah has jumped at the opportunity. Oh God. It's so weird to feel nervous about seeing your own daughter. <laughs> it's the first visit from a parent since the girls started boarding. April's mum is working and can't get to see her. Hello, darling. Oh. Is April coming with us? Is April coming with us? Is April coming with us? Yeah. Would you like April to come with us? Yeah. Okay, where should I see you? Should I see you in the atrium? Okay. Okay, go get a Sarah. Twins' parents also can't make it. Right, come on then. Ring Basil. Nice to see you, Simone. We're going around the world. We'll be back for maybe um, a couple, a hundred years. And as Sarah takes the girls out for a treat, the twins are left behind in the boarding house. can only leave the grounds for an hour and their visit is soon okay. over. Bye. 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 In the next few days the routine continues and the girls begin to realize that their lives have changed. time now and it's like home from home really. What's the worst bit about it or what's the most difficult bit about it? Um, not seeing your mum, that's the only bit. Do you miss her? Yeah. 
Yeah. I've been without my mouth for two days. Already, but not for a week. Is it harder than you thought? Yeah. Much harder. What's been on your mind most since you've been at school? Waiting to see my mum. That's all, really. Ten long days after the start of term, April's mum, Sandra, is on her way to pick up her daughter. Oh, sorry. All four girls are going home to spend the weekend with their parents. realise how much I missed you until you come home. But we worked it out. It's nice though, isn't it? Because now we just have lots of special time. Yeah. Every time you come home, yeah? When we go back to school, how long am I at home for? Well, you'll go back to school. Yeah. And then you've got a whole week at school and then you've got Water Wars is on Sunday. Yeah. And you want to do that, don't you? That's the... No, don't want to do that. You want... Well, we'll see. We'll see. And then you go back to school and you've got about another couple of weeks or something, and then you've got half term. So you've got another whole week at, at home. What do you think of that? Cool. Yeah, is that okay? So we'll just sort of break it down into little bite sizes every time, yeah? Yeah. And then that way you don't miss Mummy too much and I don't miss you, and I can come down and see you on Wednesday. Yeah. We'll see how it goes, yeah? Mm -hmm. Good girl. I want me to come in. It's coming. Not right in. How about I just get in like that, yeah? Eight-year-old April Ross is at home with her mum, Sandra, for the first time since she started at boarding school. But now you have to take them home. I know. We're going to have a lovely weekend, okay? Okay. Right, night, night, Tony. God bless, Tony. Night, night. Mm. God bless. See you in the morning. Oh, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. April's brother, Alex, has been a boarder at the same school for the last two years. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Most weekends, he chooses to stay in the yeah, boarding house rather than go back to his parents. Uh, well... Right now, we're doing Alpha Force, and we dress up as terrorists, and we run around the boarding house pretending to be terrorists. I ring her mainly every Wednesday and Saturday, because yeah. on Wednesday and Saturday are where my matches are, so then I can tell her if I won or lost. Yeah, you see, look, look, look. I'm That's not fancy. <laughs> Why are you, uh, <laughs> dressed just... like that? No, Taliban. I'm going to blow the place up. Hey. I wouldn't <laughs> say that because you're not really the Taliban, are you? Let's yeah. face it. Yeah, we're, no, we're, no, we're not. We're just shielding our face. It's called Alpha Force. Yeah. Why are you shielding your face? Because then if the staff catch us, they don't know who it is. They can't yeah, tell us off. Okay, ready? Right, let's go and get them. Alpha Force, go, go, go. The 
crosses hope that April will enjoy boarding as much as her brother. But as they take her back to school for the first time, it's still early days for both mother and daughter. Okay, sweetheart. So if I put that on my bed. my bed and of course Fraser had gone because Fraser had gone at the crack of dawn and um, she just broke into floods of tears and just said oh mummy you know I just miss you so much and she, she said you know I, I love Highfield she said but I just hate boarding I, you never liked you never want to see your children upset you know about anything I mean it's something that maybe you've sort of um, inflicted on them inflicted just makes you feel really bad. You're not a wicked mother, honey. <laughs> You're not. No, no, it's just, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. But sometimes you feel it. Sometimes you feel it. But we, we'll see. We'll give it time and we'll see. I'm sure we'll get there. As the term progresses, the girls are beginning to get used to life in the school. Lottie's settling in particularly well. She's taking a lead role in the dorm. And her mother, Sarah, is becoming a convert to boarding. What I'm getting is really lovely time when we're appreciating each other and I'm not having the shouting at her to get ready in the morning and shouting at her to do her homework. And um, we just seem to be having the, the nice time together, which is lovely. I'm really lucky. I hope it works as well for Henry. <sighs> Debating at the moment whether or not to send him as a day boy or a boarder, but um, I'm quite inspired to send him boarding by Lottie's experience and the fact that she'll be there to, to look after him a bit. <laughs> Caitlin and Simone are becoming more confident and appear to be adapting well to their first taste of public school. Have they changed since the beginning of term? Well, I don't, I don't know so much, really. Well, now Caitlin says gas mask instead of gas mask. And she talks about France from... And she talks about France, France. And, and yeah, I do, I do remember so, that. Some of the words are like, mm, yeah. well spoken, I think, so. <laughs> yeah. But after her first visit home, April is finding it more difficult. Oh, do you feel sick because you feel ill? Or do you feel sick because you're upset? Why? 
You always want to, but then you end up having a really good time. Do you? Yeah. So you just need to think of the fun that you're going to have. Yeah? And try and not think about home, which I know is difficult. Yeah? But you have to try. So are you going to try and go to sleep? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Try not to be upset. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Promise? Alright. Good night. Nice knowing that, Caitlin. Um, April's developed a strong attachment to Miss King, a gap year student who helps out in the junior boarding house. She was a boarder herself from a young age and knows how tough it can be. I started boarding school when I was nine and I left when I was 18. And um, I was on the phone to my mum every night begging her to come and get me. She never did, ever, <laughs> which I didn't like. You only allowed one rebound. April's brother Alex also struggled with homesickness when he started boarding. This weekend, he's left the school to go to his best friend's house. You think it makes it worse if you keep going home? Yeah, I think so. That's why I stay in quite a lot, not only because it's fun activities, because... I know if I go home and then I come back and then I think, oh, I miss mum now because I've seen mum. And then, because if you don't see your parents for quite a long time, you become to, you gradually get used to it. Whereas if you keep seeing your parents, you keep saying, I want to see mum again, I want to see mum again. But because I see mum, maybe I, I'm at school for maybe two or three weeks, then I get more used to being away from mum. Um, but... April goes home every weekend, so she sees mum for a weekend and then she thinks, oh, I really want to see mum again in the week. So I think that makes it a lot harder. What's it like being back in your room? Oh, I love it. Do you? I love my room. What's the best thing about being at home? Well, seeing your mum doing everything, really. Not doing school work, not being waked up at seven in the morning, having more hugs, well, being hugged and stuff. I don't like going back to school. Soon, April won't be able to come home as often as she'd like. The Rosses have recently learned that the army will be moving them three hours away from the school. When we move, Fraser's going to be in Afghanistan. My two children have been around in Hampshire at school. I'm stuck in Suffolk. And I think I'm going to feel really... sort of like a real redundant mum. I'm going to feel very... It's going to be wrong. School bags, school shoes. Yeah. Well, they're, they're in here. That's the main thing. The plan is for April to stay in school for most of next term. So the Ross is needed to settle as soon as possible.
as she goes through the second half of term, things don't get any better for April. No. I know you do. And she probably misses you too. You're saying that tomorrow. You're supposed to be doing your bed. <laughs> are so concerned that they're now beginning to question whether they were right to send April to boarding school in the first place. Every week I sit here with Fraser and I say, right, look, we've got to, we've got to have plan B. I am um, going to be looking into local schools. I came from Alaska looking for incredible research opportunities. going to be looking into local schools so that if it doesn't work out then when we move in March that April will come with us but I actually it, it's, a, it's a heart and a, and, a, and a head which one rules my, my head says that actually you know long term and for everything for April the best thing is that she stays where she is and we just grit it and we get there eventually. But then my heart kicks in and sort of says, but how long do you kid yourself that it's actually going to be okay? How long do you actually give yourself before, before it, it, you know, you do draw the line? Right. It's November in the boarding house. And eight-year-old April Ross is struggling to get over her homesickness. To make matters worse, she's feeling unwell. Any of this is bothering you or upsetting you. So you come and find me in the surgery and talk to me about it. And let me know. Because it's really, really difficult for Mummy and Daddy. They know when they hear you so upset. Because they're you know, a, a far way away and... They can't do anything, but they want to help you, and they hate to hear you like this. So, okay. Don't wake them up. In a final attempt to settle her, Sandra has decided to limit her contact with April. Okay, okay. Well, she's here now, and I will have a good chat. So tonight, it's April's father, Fraser, who's calling to check up on her. Of course I will. Um, would you like to say that to her? Okay, I'll okay. okay. just hand it back to her. Bye bye, Fraser. Daddy, have you spoken to Mrs. Dunn? It's been a heartbreaking decision for Sandra. Especially at a time when her daughter is feeling vulnerable. First of all, I'm really sorry, and I'm sorry you're so upset. Um, you know, Fraser was explaining how upset you are, and it's so difficult, isn't it? You know, and you and April are so close, and when she's upset, you're heartbroken. <laughs> But I think the toughest thing for you is you're, you know, 20, 30 miles away. You know, you have to trust, have your trust in us that, you know, you know we're looking after April. The school rallies round April and are convinced that Sandra's making the right decision. We're the one that the children come to we're the one the shoulders that they cry on and you know, all that sort of thing and I think the mums can feel slightly detached and they do feel like they've been sidelined because they don't have automatic access to them and they have to put their trust in us and we have to try and impress upon them that we do know what we're talking about and to have to say to a parent actually you know if if you want to find out how your child is doing contact me phone me in the boarding office or contact me via email but please you know try not to phone too much into the house because actually um 
you, you, because your child is, is perfectly happy and then the call comes through and then they, you know, they just plummet, quite frankly. And then we have to scoot them up and off we go again. I feel quite redundant at times and um, I just, I do miss the children, you know, just... There's no other way to um, to say it. It's just tough. Yeah, yeah, I miss them. So it's not it's not easy. It creates a void in your life that you just have to fill. And I haven't quite worked out how I'm filling it properly yet. Although I am starting to do the local pub quiz, I'm getting quite good at that. So that's got to be a plus. But. Uh, it's it's a funny sort of existence, really. As autumn becomes winter, the girls become closer and April appears to be getting over the separation. Why don't you want to give me away? Now that you're at the end of the first term, what was it like? It was scary. And I was excited, and it's fun. We will always miss our mum, um, but, but sometimes, sometimes she... you forget about them, and then you, then you feel okay. Yeah, because you and forget that's... about them, and you say, "Oh, um, uh, and let's stay at the weekend." Yeah, there are people that don't miss them. But that is, but what do you think about that? I just think it's strange. But I mean. They're at boarding school, and of course they, their mums and dads sent them there to, I don't really know, but um, uh, but uh, if you don't miss your mum, it's kind of unnatural, so, very unnatural. got a new best friend, Lottie. How are you two? Fine. Do you want to talk? Oh, yeah, I like to talk. Oh, I do want you to talk. <laughs> talk to me, please. <laughs> I sometimes feel really homesick. Uh, same okay. would like to go home. At some point, I did say to my mum, can I come to Suffolk with you? But only at one point. And then I just said, actually, it's not that bad. But you, you, you won't... The only time you get really, really bad is on the phone. The only time you get really, really bad is on the phone. No, the really, really bad bit is at bedtime. Yeah. Bedtime and saying goodbye to your mum is so bad. And apart from the one here, because that was really quick. I just ran upstairs, can I have a kiss? I'm not sure, bye. And that was the only thing that I didn't cry. But. So, so do you think that you're learning that the best thing is to just get it over and done with quite quickly? Yeah. yeah. It's the last day of term, and all of the girls' parents have come to watch them in the Christmas play. Caitlin, Simone, Lottie and April 
will return to Highfield next year to continue their new lives as boarders. I think they're doing really well. And I, it's nice that they're with April and Lottie because they're getting on so well. I wish there was 10 more April and Lotties in that house. That's because I think the people around them definitely help. It's been so much better than I thought it would be. The whole thing has just been such a resounding success. But um, you know, I'm thrilled. Very proud of her. <laughs> Ago, we took her back on a, on a Sunday and uh, she was fab actually, she was brilliant and it was the first time that we, we didn't sort of have the tears and the, you know, the, the build up to it. She doesn't rely on me so much, which, you know, it's, it's, it's selfish for me to say it's hard because it is hard, but it's actually lovely to see her growing up and developing. What I don't know is the long-term effect. I don't want April, whether she be 13 or 14 or 18 or whatever, turn around and say, oh, but mum, you know, you, you, you and daddy, you sent me off to school when I was too young, and I, and I really, I, you know, it, that it's got a profound effect on her later. So, you know, I still battle with it and I still don't know what the right answer is.